Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, Ireland, what's going on, man? Yeah, hey, yeah, I love coming over to this place here, man. And when I'm done here in Ireland, I got to go back to Georgia. When I get to Georgia, the first thing they're going to do, they're going to ask me about you. The first thing they're going to do, you know, a lot of white people. <laughs> oh, man, this is where they make white people, man. <laughs> It's like white people's Africa. <laughs> I was in America recently, and uh, I have a bit of American guilt. Just, I wasn't there when September 11th happened, and I feel like I should have been there. I don't know what I would have done, but I should have been there, you know? <laughs> maybe, maybe like 10 less people would have died if I was there or something like that, I don't know. I wasn't there when Hurricane Katrina happened in New Orleans. And I remember I was sitting in London watching the coverage of Hurricane Katrina. And I'm looking at the coverage, I'm looking at Americans like me in the streets, robbing, looting, just to survive. Well, I'm American, I'm civilized. I've read a book, been to a couple of plays, you know. But the reality is I'm probably just one big thunderstorm away from sucking cock for potatoes. <laughs> I'm not happy about this, I mean, I'm not gay, so my cocksucking skills ain't nothing to brag about. <laughs> I don't really like potatoes all that much either, so. <laughs> yeah, man, I love it over here, man. When I say, I mean, I love it over here, I mean, like, I really, really love it, because um, Irish people, y'all a lot like black people. Um, well, in a way, you white people, but with none of the entitlement. It's an incredible thing, man. Just, I mean, my Irish friends, they'd be like, hey, Reg, I don't know if we can get into this club. And I'd be like, but you white. How could you possibly feel like that? <laughs> See, black people don't do entitlement very well. Because when black people try to act entitled, it just looks mean and shitty. Yeah, yeah. That's why Naomi Campbell keeps getting in trouble. And when I say, you know, because generally, when that white people do entitlement very well, except for Irish people. Um, when I say entitlement, nobody quite wants to speak to your manager the way a white person do. Nobody quite writes a letter to the editor quite the way a white person can. <laughs> nobody can talk shit to a cop quite the way a white person can. Just, you know, nobody can hijack a third world economy quite the way a white person can. <laughs> And I'm not being racist. Black people, we can hijack third world economies, but we tend to have to live where the economy is that we hijack it. <laughs> White people can do it from other countries. I'm calling from Sweden. Fuck up Nigeria. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my friends, they always ask me, is there a lot of white people? And yeah. <laughs> I mean, I meet a lot of white people. And most of the white people I've met since I've been in this part of the world have been fantastic, world class. Um, Ireland in particular, you do white people very well. Um, <laughs> but I do meet a certain type of white person. They nice, but they nervy, just socially nervous, constantly afraid they're doing the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing or not properly observing your, co um, your, your customs. But <laughs> there's a particular white person they have a secret fear that they might be racist, but they don't know it. <laughs> they're constantly afraid that they're being racist, but they, there's no evidence that they are. But just, was that racist? Did I say something racist? I was at a party one night, and this guy walks up, and we just talking, laughing, joking, drinking. Suddenly he says, may I ask you something? I say, anything. He goes, I, I, I'm not trying to be out of order. I said, just say it, man. I think I might have been racist recently, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I said, okay, this again, go ahead. He says, I was in a cinema last Tuesday and I bumped into a black guy and I said, sorry, didn't see you. Now, <laughs> you tell me if that was racist. <laughs> oh 
don't know, man. Fuck, was there hatred in your heart when you said it? I mean... And I'm not having to go. If you are one of these such white people who are socially nervy and worried about being racist, just good on you that you care enough about your own behavior to check yourself, but don't overdo it. Because if you overdo it, you just make yourself socially neurotic. And plus, if you're worried about being racist when you, there's no evidence that you have been, then you also make yourself vulnerable and susceptible to con men. Con men like Nelson Mandela. So, <laughs> Nelson Mandela makes most of his money now by traveling around the world, blessing white people for a fee. <laughs> Just a little bit of a joke. That's based in truth. <laughs> Man, but see, see, it's hard to hear something like that because you know, there's some things that you accept as truth or real, and it sounds like, oh my God, how are you attacking that or whatever? Like, there's some things like it's, it, we accept as basic truth, like uh, 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 men are naturally violent. No, they ain't. A man that has the ability to eat every day and see that the people he love can eat and have some sense of self-respect for what he do every day, he has a tendency not to need to knock another motherfucker in the head. <laughs> Thing. Women are crazy. No, they ain't. No, they ain't. No, they ain't. Not mentally. <laughs> and that emotional stuff happens after they get to this planet. I was at a party one night, a housewarming party. Cause I care about houses. And um I was at a housewarming party one night. And there was, this, there was these two girls sitting on the end of the couch talking. And, they, and one girl was on the phone. And I heard her say, no, I'm busy that day. No, I'm busy that day, too. Yeah, maybe later in the week. I'll call you. I'll call you. <laughs> Bye. And she hang up, and both girls start giggling. And then the girl who had been on the phone, I heard her say, men love a bit of a challenge. <laughs> now, let me just say, I am no stranger to bullshit. <laughs> I hear bullshit every day. All day sometimes, I'm 41. I got an agent, I watch the news, I've been in relationships, I'm used to bullshit. But <laughs> sometimes you hear a piece of bullshit that is so fantastic, you cannot be a dirty cop and look the other way. <laughs> I had to make an arrest. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, did I just hear you say that men love a bit of a challenge? She's like, yep, that's exactly what I said. I said, really? I said, could you tell me where you got that piece of information from? Uh, did you get that piece of information from a man? Or did you get that from maybe uh, other women or your dad? And um, <laughs> <laughs> and she says, well, it's just common knowledge. Everyone knows that. I said, really? I said, that's interesting, because I've been around men my whole life. I know about men. I'm a man. In fact, my dad, he's a man. Um, my male friends, they men. Some of my female friends, they men. And, uh, and in all my time being around men, I ain't never heard no man go, hey, Tom, you know that thing I love more than anything in the world? Yeah, pussy. I just wish it was harder to get. <laughs> 